A room full of about 4,000 teenagers, high school and middle school students. I said, if that's you, I wanna pray for you. And, we, and then people closed their eyes. We gave a moment of privacy for that. Everybody was already standing in the worship, but I said, if that's you, I want you just to lift your hand as high and as bold as you can, and I wanna pray over you. And in the next few seconds, I almost completely collapsed in their response. That we're all living in an uber anxiety-driven world. Depression, is off the charts and suicide now, along with fentanyl and other drugs that are taking people out via overdose, the suicide rate is actually causing the life expectancy in America to drop for the first time in 60 years. And there's a correlation in all of these things. I say this as an anxiety overcomer, as someone who's been down in the deep pit of depression and somebody who knows about how desperate it is to spend months of your life incapacitated and unable to function in the real world. But I also know this, I know God is still alive and God has a plan. I was speaking a few months ago in an event that changed the trajectory of my now. Uh, Carrie and Cody, who had led in DC tonight, were leading into this event with me after my message, which was not really related to what I'm saying right now. They were leading worship. I was standing on the side of the stage as they were leading their first song of response. I got a, an impression in my mind, in my spirit, of a, a picture of a person. And, you know, I, all those things come and go, and, and so I, I kind of like to hold those loosely, but I, I sensed the Lord had put an, an, like an impression I could see someone, not to the minute detail, but pretty clearly in my mind. And the Lord said, there, there's a person in this room who's got a plan right now to end their life. Not that they've thought about it, that they've been sad, that they've been lonely, that, you know, they've been desperate at times, but they have actually have a plan in place. They have written a letter in their journal, which is in their drawer, in their desk, in their bedroom, and they are here tonight, but they already have a plan in place, and I want to rescue them tonight. I want to speak the psalmist words over them tonight. I will live and not die, and I will declare what the Lord has done. And so I looked at Carrie in between the songs and I just said, can I speak? She stepped to the side a bit. I walked out. I described not that person I saw, but I just said, I believe there's somebody here tonight and I believe you have a specific plan. You've already written a letter, already said goodbye to your family. You think you're the only person who's seen that letter. But what I want you to know tonight is two people have seen that letter. You've seen it and Jesus has seen it and Jesus is speaking to you right now and he wants to interrupt your funeral plan with a message and that message is that he is for you and not against you. He's got purposes and plans for your life and I'm not trying to hype anything up but if somehow faith is turning around in your heart in this night, I wanna give you a chance to say, I'm standing with the hope that God is speaking over my life. And out of a room full of about 4,000 teenagers, high school and middle school students, I said, if that's you, I want to pray for you. And, we, and then people closed their eyes. We gave a moment of privacy for that. Everybody was already standing in the worship. But I said, if that's you, I want you just to lift your hand as high and as bold as you can. And I want to pray over you. And in the next few seconds, I almost completely collapsed in their response. Because I wanna say, and I, I can't specifically remember every detail about that moment, but out of that 4,000 people, I wanna say somewhere between 100 and 200 hands went into the air. And we prayed, and I believe God worked and moved. We, we left that room and went back into the back room where everybody was kind of hanging out the leadership as we left. And one of the youth leaders who put the conference on walked up to me and said, did, did you plan on doing that at the end? I said, no, God just put a picture of this girl in my mind. And I just felt like that heaven wanted to reach out for her. And he said, well, it's, it's really amazing that 
God led you to do that because maybe you don't know, but where you're standing right now is the zip code with the highest teen suicide rate in America. And so the next day, I got a message via social media. It's kind of interesting how that can happen. And the message was from someone who just wrote, I'm paraphrasing now, if anybody ever asks you in your life if you've been a part of saving someone's life, you can always say yes. And I understand it's not me, you get that. And they wrote, you saved mine tonight. I already have a plan in place and had already planning, planned a few days after this conference for the place and the time that I was going to end my life. And I've already written my letter to my family. But tonight, God changed my heart. And I am not going to die, but I'm going to live and be a part of God's purposes for my life. And I couldn't help. You know, you, we always live in that, that teetering zone of do, do I click on the profile and see who the person is or I just read the comment and move on. But we click on the profile, and so I clicked on the profile, and the profile was the girl. It was her. And that set my 2018 and into this night on a trajectory of wanting to speak life into an anxiety-riddled generation. To not accept the premise in culture, which is, hey, it's just a part of the deal. We all know the words of Jesus. The thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life and life to the full. In other words, I didn't come out of the tomb so that you could be 78% of you. I came out of the tomb so that you could see yourself in Christ in a brand new way and grow up in Christ to be a powerhouse in your generation. And I believe that this is what God is speaking over you, over each and every one of you. And whether you had the best father or have the best father, and that helped you move forward in life? Or whether this no-fault divorce thing, which by the way is a misnomer because that's what you heard, right? It's not your fault, baby girl. It's not your fault, Ace. This is not about you, sweetheart. This is about daddy. This is about mama. This is about us. This is not about you. But it's interesting how many times we hear the phrase, this is not about you. But in our teenage minds or our childhood minds, the words get translated as they're coming into our heart. It's all about you. So there is no no fault anything. It's a crater that leaves a hole and a gap. And when you combine that with this screen in front of us, which is a tool for good. It does allow us to stay connected with people and encourage people around the world and tell people about the things that matter in life. But it also is a constant beacon of terror and of evil and of taunting and of comparing. It teaches us how to filterize everything. It's bombarding us with blue light, which apparently is uh, making us less smart. And uh, it's making us crazy and keeping us up at night. And when you combine all those things together, there's no doubt that we have an issue here. And at Passion 2019, at the end of this thing, we want to send you out. That's our goal. In fact, we ended Passion last year with a message about a flaming arrow being shot out of the bow of the hands of God into the world. And we want to send you out at the end of this conference. But before we can send you anywhere, before God can send you anywhere, you need to know that God sees you right where you are. So God isn't just interested in getting you to do something. He wants you to understand that he sees 
you just like you are and right where you are. And he loves you and his prayer for you is that you'd let him set, him, set you free in these days. And you're like, well, what does that look like to be set free? I believe tonight it looks like coming to really believe deep down in the deepest part of you that you are a loved son and a loved daughter of a perfect father. We read this in Romans chapter 8 where Paul is unpacking for us the power of the gospel. And when he comes to verse 15, he says this, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him, by this spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. Now that's an Aramaic word, the language of the time of Jesus, and an English word side by side that mean slightly different things, whether you were speaking Aramaic or speaking English. But that spirit, he says, that we received allows us to cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we're heirs, heirs of God, hello, and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings, that means we take up this cause of the cross in order that we may also share in his glory. For you did not receive. So this is written to anybody who's put faith in Jesus. Because when we put faith in Jesus, something happens inside of us, and that is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, comes into our spirit and brings our spirit to life. And when that Spirit comes into us, here's the message that it's bringing. You are no longer a slave. You are now a son or a daughter of God. Now that's the part when I said I'm gonna say some things that most people in here are gonna go, yes, I have heard that before, thank you very much. But there's a difference between just hearing that and going, oh yeah, I get what you're saying, and believing and receiving that and actually changing the way you approach yourself and approach life. To start living life like you are a child of the Almighty God, an heir of God, and co-heirs with the Son of God. That if you take up this gospel message, this cross of Jesus, that you are going to be in the glory that is coming through the finished work of Jesus Christ now and into eternity. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.